start you to see no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Before I forget, if you have not received your communion cup, make sure you raise your hand so the ushers can get you one. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you grab something to eat and drink so you can join us for communion. Today, you should have been given, aside from your communion cup, a survey, a wise survey, that I highly encourage each and every one of you to fill out. If you want to fill out as a couple, that's fine. Indicate on the form that there's two of you filling it out. You do not have to place your name on there. So just put a number two on the corner or something so that the committee knows that there's two of you who are answering that same one form, okay? Otherwise, just fill it out. Um, this is part of the wise process. This was done by a colleague. And you'll notice her name is at the end. Um, on page four, you'll have the pastor's name for that congregation for which it was done. But you also have my colleague's name, who's, uh, she's actually a doctor, uh, Vicki Hoffner. She says licensed psychologist. So because of her expertise, she helped her congregation walk through the WISE process with this form to give them a little more insight. So she recommended that for our WISE team. So make sure you fill that out. Um, you do not have to hand it to the committee members. You can easily just put it in their box. There is a box in the office, ONA slash WISE. You can fold it up and put it in there. If you want to talk about it, then you can approach one of the committee members and hand it to them as well. I would encourage you to do it before you leave today. And if not, at least bring it back by next Sunday so that the committee has something to start on so that we can continue with the process. Anything else you wanted to add to that, Karen? Does everyone have a survey? If not, I'll run one to you. Everyone has one? Anybody else? Now, this is important because I can easily tell the committee what I've assessed over the last one plus year, but it's not as personal as you giving them that feedback. So as pastor, yes, I've made my assessments, but I encourage you to put it in from your own heart, your own perspective into this form so that they get that perspective as well. If you want to add commentary on there, please do so. Um, there's no shame. Uh, especially today, we start Mental Health Awareness Month, which runs through all the month of May. And as you'll notice, some of the signs on the communion table. Also, we want to be in prayer, not just today, but moving forward for the next few days, for Gary Hoover, who had a heart attack this morning. So Marilyn was given a call early this morning, so keep him in your prayers. We also want to give a prayers for Jesse, Dolores' daughter, who fell and broke her foot in two places, who will be having surgery later this week. So keep her in your prayers. Uh, anybody else who needs any prayers? I know we all need prayers at one point, but in particular, something that's weighing heavy today. If not, I ask you to keep those folks in prayer along with all those who, and it might be one of you who live with mental illness, who struggle through get up in the morning or who struggle through travel through the week. And let's also give a round of applause to those birthdays listed and anniversaries listed in your bulletin for this week. <laughs> Any other announcements? Don't forget today, there is a Christian Ed Committee meeting at 11 o'clock in the lounge. So whether you're part of the committee or you have questions for the committee, you can always drop in and ask them the questions. And also the ONA and WISE Committee will also be meeting today and they'll be in the library, correct? In the library. There's no other announcements, let us begin our worship service. Come and bring your hidden places. Come and bring your hurting spaces. Come and eat with hearts separated. Come and drink new worlds to me. Come and feast, your vision spread. The spirit of hope connects the fed. Jesus says, come. We pray in Jesus' name, the original advocate for social justice, 
as we enter in silent prayer with an embodied awareness of God's sacredness within us. Please join me in our call to worship. On this Mental Health Sunday, we join in this litany of naming. As a congregation, we are glad to lift up our voices and our spirits to break the silence that often happens when we are confronted with mental illness. As a faith community, we name the gifts and the often unnamed experiences which come to those who live with a mental illness such as major depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety disorder, schizophrenia, substance use, addiction, historic and generational trauma, racial trauma, grief, and eating disorder. We name the hope which upholds our spirit the pain when people turn away because of fear, the courage to speak in the same place, the way that Jesus spoke through the blood. The strength from being with others who listen compassionately. The isolation that comes when no one knows what to say. The realization that mental illness and brain can be The exhaustion that comes with living with a mental illness, as well as for those who are caregivers. The wisdom that comes when we become educated about mental health. The spirituality that comes when we walk alongside those who show both resilience and vulnerability in their lives affected by mental illness. We receive these gifts that we have named, those which are welcome and those that are challenges. We come before you, our God, knowing we are not alone, and that you will show us a way to keep you in the name of Jesus.
God of promise and possibility, we come before you broken and breathless, thinking we are trudging through a valley of priceless bones. We look for life amidst the bones and dust and fail to notice your breath flowing in and around us. We think we need to be perfect before we can enter the new life you have for us. We become fearful when illness in the body, mind, or spirit enters into our lives or the lives of those around us. We worry that sickness of body, that mental illness, is a judgment from you. We would rather walk in a valley of bones than believe that your love, your spirit, claims us all in our brokenness and our wholeness. Open us to the power of your spirit a power that makes us all whole, bone, sinew, and flesh filled with your breath. Let us remember that you do not leave us alone in a valley filled with dusty, dry bones. You call us into new life again and again. And now please join me in our assurance of grace. Hear the good news. No valley is too despairing, broken, or dusty for God to enter in. No fear, no chaos, no homelessness is beyond the reach of the one whose breath gives us life. Through Christ, God sees only our homelessness. Through Christ, forgiveness, love, and new life are always possible. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Make all things new. We are reclaimed and remade by the Spirit of life. In our brokenness and in our wholeness, we are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to stand in body and spirit and share a sign of peace by waving to each other.
chapter 12, verse 14 through 26. Our bodies don't have just one part. They have many parts. Suppose a foot says, I'm not a foot, and so I'm not part of the body. Wouldn't the foot still belong to the body? Or suppose an ear says, I'm not an eye, and so I'm not part of the body. Wouldn't the ear still belong to the body? If our bodies were only an eye, we couldn't hear a thing. And if they were only an ear, we couldn't smell a thing. But God has put all parts of our body together in the way that he decided is best. A body isn't really a body unless there is more than one part. It takes many parts to make a single body. That's why the eyes cannot say they don't need the hands. That's also why the head cannot say it doesn't need the feet. In fact, we cannot get along without the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest. We take special care to dress up some parts of our bodies. We are modest about our personal parts, but we don't have to be modest about other parts. God put our bodies together in such a way that even the parts that seem the least important are valuable. He did this to make all parts of the body work together smoothly, with each part caring about the others. If one part of our body hurts, we hurt all over. If one part of our body is honored, the whole body will be happy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 4 through 18. Then walked another whole day into the desert. Finally, he came to a large bush and sat down in its shade. He begged the Lord, I've had enough. Just let me die. I'm no better off than my ancestors. Then he lay down in the shade and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel woke him up and said, Get up and eat. Elijah looked around, and by his head was a jar of water and some baked bread. He sat up, ate and drank, then lay down and went back to sleep. Soon the Lord's angel woke him again and said, Get up and eat, or else I'll get too tired to travel. So Elijah sat up and ate and drank. The food and water made him strong enough to walk 40 more days. At last, he reached Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand and body your spirit for our gospel reading this morning, according to Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. In the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had gone to many doctors, and they had not done anything except cause her a lot of pain. She had paid them all the money she had, but instead of getting better, she only got worse. The woman had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him in the crowd and barely touched his clothes. She had said to herself, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. As soon as she touched them, her bleeding stopped, and she knew she was healed. At that moment, Jesus felt power go out from him. He turned to the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, look at all of these people crowding around you. How can you ask who touched you? But Jesus turned to see who had touched him. The woman knew what had happened to her. She came trembling with fear and knelt down in front of Jesus. Then she told him the whole story. Jesus said to the woman, you are now well because of your faith. Many God, may God give you peace. You are healed and you will no longer be in pain. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let us not place a period where God has placed a comma. God is still speaking. scripture there's a theme and it's not May flowers or April showers if you read the newsletter already you'll have read the article I wrote on there for y'all I know Bob did because <clears throat> he approached me about it and I told him well Jacob and I were talking last night and we're like well I guess April figured Got to go out with a bang, and that's why we had so much showers. That aside, we're in Maine. Traditionally, 
the saying says, April showers bring May flowers. But you see, May doesn't always bring flowers in the face of so many in our society. Even some of you here today. Some of you may still be stuck in those April showers. And that's okay. Hence, your story isn't over yet. It's okay not to be okay. And you matter. I want you to keep that in mind. I know traditionally, your age group down to my age group, we've been told to sweep it under the rug. We don't talk about it or it's in your head. And what am I talking about? Among a whole bunch of other issues in our society, I'm talking about mental health. That doesn't serve a good purpose. Why? Because all that does, it makes us feel ashamed or embarrassed. And we should be feeling that. Because mental illness is just like any other illness that we have. How many of you don't tell someone, oh, I live with diabetes. I shouldn't be eating sugar, but I do. Because I know a lot of you are in there. I won't point out who you are. Or how many of you live with high blood pressure and know that you should be monitoring your high blood pressure? Mental illness is no different. See, but the problem is that because mental illness has been shunned under the rug for so long, oftentimes people don't seek treatment. And treatment doesn't mean you have to be in a psychiatric hospital because that's the illusion that our society has created. No, it means seeking a therapist. And a therapist doesn't mean that you're crazy. A therapist means that you have an unbiased third party who is not in your immediate circle who will listen to your ways, listen to what's weighing heavy on you and help you sort it out. They are not the solution to the problem, but they will help you. And then you also see a psychiatrist or an MD for medication because a combination of that will help you just like diabetics, right? We say diabetics, oh, so-and-so is diabetic. Or should we say, so-and-so lives with diabetes? Because when we say they're diabetic, we are just labeling them as diabetic, that that's all that they are. And that is not all that you are. See, and that's often time when someone's like, oh, they're bipolar. No, they live with bipolar. They're depressed. Well, are they depressed in the moment, or are you saying they live with depression? There's a difference. See, sometimes all you need is therapy, and you're fine. That keeps your mental illness at bay. Sometimes you need medication. Sometimes it's a combination. Every treatment is different for each individual. Not one is the same. And only because you start medication doesn't mean you're going to instantly feel better. Because just like any medication, it's going to take time. Now, because we've already been experiencing we're in crisis when we receive that medication, most of us are like, it better work, right? Kind of like an antibiotic, right? It's supposed to help you almost instantly. And if it doesn't, it's not working, I'm gonna stop taking it. I, I know a lot of you are guilty of that, right? Well, but mental illness, it's a similar pattern. People don't feel that it's working, so they stop taking it, and they end up hurting themselves because medication for mental illness can take four to six weeks to really take full effect. And even then, the prescription, the dose that they give you does not mean that is the dose that you require. You might need more, or maybe you need less. See, because you are all you need. And we heard in first scripture today is, if the hand is removed, is it still a hand? Is it still part of the body? What about the eye? See, brought one of Nathaniel's puzzles 
Good thing he didn't fight there this morning when he saw me taking it. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have it up here. If we take out one piece, we have an incomplete puzzle, but we still have pieces on it. We remove another piece, it's still a puzzle, but it's incomplete. And if you love puzzles, and I know some of you here do, what are you most likely to do with this puzzle? Some of you would probably toss it out, right? Because that's often what we do when a puzzle is incomplete and we can't find the missing pieces. And sometimes if you throw the puzzle, and a few days later you find the pieces, but you no longer have the puzzle. See, God doesn't do that. Because all of us are part of the body of Christ. And God is not going to throw out the body of Christ. Instead, God really spends the time looking for these pieces that are missing to fit them back in. And if you notice, just like this puzzle, it's different colors. Different, it's not a different shape, right? Or they're all square. But they have a different hole in them. Just like some of us have a hole in the head. Just kidding. Bad joke in a mental health Sunday. <laughs> but what I mean is, even though they're all square, they're all different in one way or another. Just like each and every one of you. Yes, you might be female just like the person next to you is female. That doesn't mean that you have the same characteristics that makes you whole. And if you are hurting, then the body of Christ is hurting. See, that's why oftentimes when in our society we see so much hate and so much oppression, most of us don't pay attention that when that part of society is broken and hurting, God is weeping because we are hurting another part of the body of Christ. And oftentimes we're like, oh, well, it doesn't bother me, that's another person. So if I see Hannah over there bleeding, oh, she'll get help. See, no, it should be my job. If I see her, is there something I can do? Is she bleeding so black she needs to be at the hospital? See, <clears throat> part of the reason why we're going through the WISE process is so that we can have open dialogue about mental illness and to destigmatize the shame, the embarrassment that comes with it. Because oftentimes our society has done a really, really bad job about it. And when we begin to have this honest, open dialogues, it helps you heal. Now, say, well, I don't live with mental illness. Great for you. But I can assure you, at one point in your life, you will experience a mental health episode. And what does that mean? While you might be healthy mentally most of your life, doesn't mean you don't experience those moments where you are in anguish. Like I know Marilyn, this morning is feeling like a lot of things are weighing on her because getting notified of her son is in the hospital. I know that Karen, having just said goodbye to her mom's physical presence, celebrated her mom's first birthday on Friday. And they might otherwise live really healthy mentally. But when it comes to those moments, that is an episode where it weighs heavy on you. And instead of having the sun shining brightly upon your face, all you feel is a dark cloud above you. Next Sunday is Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day. Some of you here may have wished to be biologically be mothers. 
And maybe for some reason or another, that never came to be. And so on Mother's Day, you may avoid coming to church, or you might be feeling uncomfortable. And then there's those who had a really bad relationship with their mothers who do not want to observe that day, so they avoid all sorts of things with Mother's Day. And what happens in that moment? That is trauma when you're having to deal with that on an annual basis. I've shared the story with you that I knew someone who passed recently, went to a church service on Mother's Day. As she was walking in, they were handing out roses. And she's like, oh, I'm not a mom. And they're like, oh, well, give us her a rose back. Really? How much is a damn rose? Penance. What would it have cost them to just let her have it? Maybe that rose would have signified something that she was mourning and it was just a symbol of her loss. Because what happens when there's a funeral or a memorial? You get flowers. But we also get flowers when there's a celebration. So flower is universal. And I just thought that was shameful when she shared that with me. And when she did, that's why I push forward. When it comes to Mother's Day, I give more an inclusive message. Mothering Sunday. Why? Because you don't have to biologically put a child out and raise that child to be a mother or be mothering. A male could also be mothering because sometimes males take both the role of mother and father. A mother can also do both, and we know a lot have done that. And there are some families that celebrate their mom on both Mother's Day and Father's Day. So when you think about all this trauma and how we are all built different, if one of you is hurting, then the body of Christ is hurting. We know that several of you here today are hurting for one reason or another. So the body of Christ is also hurting. We as a community are hurting together. That's why a lot of times we're like, Pastor, can you say this prayer for so and so? Is it because you're healthy? And sometimes you're like, yes, we have those good prayers too, right? We give thanks for new life. We give thanks for retiring and being able to enjoy those moments afterwards. See, <clears throat> so I was preparing for today, there's so many ideas that flow through my head, and you all know I have shared some of my own experience with you. But one thing that stuck out yesterday particularly was what happens when a person feels dead, like part of our scripture, you heard him say, just let me die, just let me sleep. How many times have you not hurt someone or you yourself experienced that word, just, just let me be? You feel like you cannot push forward. And what I can imagine is that Naomi Judd may have experienced that. Because all her daughter said was that it was a dark day, uncharted waters, and they lost their mother to mental illness. And Naomi had been very vocal of living with depression and anxiety. And while her daughter said there's no more to be said about it, one can gather what that might mean. Even at 76 years old, 76,
what does that mean? See, and she was vocal. She expressed seeking help. Treatment, like any other treatment, is not foolproof. It's not 100%. Or am I wrong, Karen? As a nurse. Diabetes, they don't say this medication is going to help you 100%. What do they often tell you? Going to help you manage high blood pressure on top of telling you, don't be throwing fits. The medication will help you manage. Why? Because that is part of what we have to do. But sometimes, in an unfortunate circumstance, in an unfortunate result of this illness, is that you die by it. And you notice the terminology that I'm using. Because even today, we still get it wrong. We go back to the old Roman Catholic saying that you committed a sin. So when you say someone committed suicide, you're still recognizing that as a crime. And siblings, it is not a crime to die by the illness that took you. How many times have you said that someone died by cancer, that they were committed by cancer? I haven't heard that or diabetes, they say they died with complications to diabetes. My friend that I shared a few weeks ago, the last few months he struggled with diabetes. And may may his soul rest in peace, but my dear friend didn't do a very good job managing his diabetes. And oftentimes, Jake and I would say, Don't you take medication? Oh, yeah. See, and that's just with anything. With anything that happens with us, we need to manage these things. And sometimes it's just a matter of reaching out. Like the woman in the scripture today, she bled for 12 years. Imagine bleeding for 12 years. I do not envy the women, even for that one time a month. Seeing my nieces and seeing my sister, I can only imagine how painful that is. And let's face it, men are wimps. <laughs> we are. We probably would not be able to handle that. See, but this woman, if you don't think of just the actual bleeding, you think she suffered for 12 years. And finally, she's like, oh, what if I reach out? then maybe, maybe I'll be helped. And she was. See, then we have our other scripture where he's like, just let me sleep, let me rest. And they're like, no, you gotta eat. You gotta drink. And what does that mean? Does that mean literally just the food? Or does that mean medication, treatment, Instead of staying inside doors with the shutters closed, with the windows, the curtains closed, being in a dark room, you open those curtains. You get some of the few days of sunshine we get in this area. Or you get the light bulbs that give you that daylight. And you turn those on. It is not easy to live with mental illness. And that is something that we don't see. Some of you have a disability, right? You use a cane, you use a walker, you use a wheelchair. Does that make you any less part of the body of Christ? No. And I won't say otherwise because they'll throw something at me. (laughs) And Roy's right here. No, right? It just means that you're different. 
that your abilities are different from those of others and you are still a treasured part of that large body of Christ. And if we don't recognize that, we fail each other and we fail God. And let's face it, we are not here to just live for our own means, for our own purpose. Otherwise, what are you doing in this room right now? Because if that is your goal for life, it's just yourself. There are the doors, there's plenty. Now don't go around saying Pastor Gilbert kicked us out of church. That's not what I'm saying. But if we come into this space, we should try to recognize the needs of each other. Does that mean that Donna is going to go carrying Hannah all the way to the hospital? No, she'll probably get time to do it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but if Hannah was in serious injury, Donna is going to say, hey, call 911. And we know we have two nurses in our building, Karen and Eileen. They could do triage in the meantime. Now, if you shared stuff with me as your pastor, those of you who have been sharing stuff with me, no, I don't share it. Unless it's something that's just not really, that needs to be kept private, right? That's just kind of generic talk. But you know if it's something private, I talk with you, not talk to you, talk with you. And I help you on that journey as much as I can. And if it ever got to the point where I cannot continue to journey with you, I'm gonna ask you, do you have a therapist? Do you want me to help you find one? Do you need a doctor? Do you want me to help you find one? Why? Because then I become part of that team that cares for you. See, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mental illness does not discriminate. And I know you have grown up in the generations where you've been told not to talk about it. And I know it's hard with any change. Change is hard. Otherwise, we'd all be making changes left and right. But at the end of the day, we need to remember that just like this puzzle, we all have our place. We all fit somewhere. See, you can take these pieces with all the different holes that they have as the different abilities that we have or the different illness. Some may only have one thing to live by. Maybe they're just angry all the time. Not a good thing, but maybe they are. Blue, what do we often say? Blue, oh, they're feeling depressed. Maybe this person lives with depression, anxiety, panic, and maybe even diabetes. But you see, they still fit. And if this person is lost, Outside the puzzle, God is still reaching out. God is not going to just let you fall asleep for eternity. Because we need to help each other. Does that mean carry the full weight for each other? No. As the months continue, we're going to give another shot to having the mental health first aid training. I encourage you that if you're able to, you attend. And if for some reason you cannot afford the participation or registration fee, let me know. We can work it out. I don't want money to be an issue for you. Companionship training 
It's like mental health first aid <coughs> light. It gives you basic, basic tools. So if someone is in crisis, you know how to respond. And notice I said respond and not react, because when we react, that's a whole other mess. So as we embark on Maine once again, and you appreciate the flowers and the birds singing and what have you. Remember that mental health is something we need to bring up to the surface, to be open about it, to talk about it. Because at the end of the day, God is not ashamed of you. God still loves you no matter what you embody. Because you are worthy, you are valued, and you are loved. Amen. Please join me in our new creed. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come into true man Jesus to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by his spirit. We trust him. He calls us to be his church, to celebrate his presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy mystery that is holy love, you are beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description, parent, son, and Holy Spirit, source of life, living word, and bond of love. You are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transforms us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, eternal as your love, our bond to one another. We rejoice with all your people of every time and place, and with angels and archangels to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy are you. Holy, holy, blessed are you. That is Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ, who joins us together as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving that he loved, living that he, what he thought, taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. And this meal, we remember Jesus, his promises, and the price he paid for who he was, what he said and what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, take, eat, and whenever you do, remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and poured it, saying, this is a new covenant, remember me. We do remember, we remember his life of love and friendship, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to life again. In sharing this meal, we live out the mystery of our faith. Christ is dying. Christ will arise. Christ will come to us again. Holy mystery, God the Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually <laughs> transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we may taste and see the goodness so that we might catch a glimpse of what it is to be in communion with you and with one another. Through Christ, in Christ and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Body of Christ. The bread of life. The life blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid on our hearts. We are now commissioned to be as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen.
beyond names, and yet who Jesus called Abba, who is the mystery of life itself, which still is at the center of all that is, and comes close to us. We seek to be present to your presence, though we have fallen short of the ways we are to be living in your realm, your way which is here and is yet to come fully. And we bring all that we have done and that which we have not done, seeking your mercy. Out of the many of our own vulnerabilities, we offer you our prayer for hope and compassion for those who are living with mental health disease. We place before you the illnesses of major depression, schizophrenia, bipolar and anxiety disorders, eating and post-traumatic stress disorders, alcoholism and drug addiction. You know us through and through and will never forsake anyone. Be with those who live with these conditions and their loved ones. So we all know that you are our sustainer and our guide. Yet in these life disruptions, you come in surprising ways to lead people through the church, organizations, medicines, and treatment centers to help us discover the ways to live, to discover the core of who we are as your beloved children. Be the light in our despair. Be the love in the places of our isolation. Be the truth when our fears bring falsehood. And be the grace that overcomes our shame. You are the God who came in Jesus to show us who you are. May we find our true selves in you as we receive all the gifts which you have given us. We thank you and bold in us to speak and live with honesty and courage, embracing our vulnerabilities and find your grace, which is sufficient for our every need. Through the living spirit of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of forever. Amen. Don't forget to give your offerings. Remember the baskets and the narthics. You can also give through Greece. May these gifts help to build a community of radical belonging that we hope to create. May they be a legacy of justice, hope, faith, and most important, love. Amen. Peace to you from God, our parent, who hears our cry. Peace from his son, Jesus Christ, whose death brings healing. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us life and strength. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs>